Hello, today I want to have a look at this 9 volt lithium ion battery. I picked it up at work in the recycle bin for batteries and I'm interested in this kind of stuff so I brought it home and it was intact first and I already cut it open. I was too impatient and then I realized uh, it might be a nice topic for a video. So let's have a look. And the reason I started using these violent methods is because I think something is wrong with it. Let's measure the output. So it measures around 8 volts, but even tiniest load makes this disappear. Let's move to the load tester. So here I connected the battery to my electronic load and as you can see the voltage is exactly zero and the load is off. So there must be some tiny tiny load even if the uh, load is disabled which makes the output from the battery disappear altogether. So finally let's have a look inside. Here we are. There are two flat lithium polymer cells and battery management board. So these are the terminals from the cells and as we can see these two are connected together. So this is a negative from uh, one cell and this is positive from the other cell and this, um, these two wires are the output and this one is positive which is black for some reason and negative is red which is very unusual. I would expect the opposite so we need to keep this in mind. So let's test uh, with the electronic load right here bypassing this management board. So here I connected the electronic load directly to the output from the cells bypassing the board and as we can see 8 volts no problem at all. Let's give it some load. Let's start with 10 milliamps. I'm enabling the load and no problem at all. It's holding the load. Let's increase that to let's say 50 or something. So still fine. Let's go even higher. Okay, 100. No problem at all. So 0.8 watts, 100 milliamps. It's holding the load just fine. So I believe the cells are fine. And there is something wrong with the battery management electronics. Let's have a look. All the components are on the other side of the board. So I need to desolder those four tabs to lift the board and have a look on the other side. Here is the other side of the board. There are two chips and a few passives around them. And I think I see what the problem is. I'm not sure if it's visible on camera or not, but this chip seems to have a hole burned in it. And I've done some research and I found what these chips are. Let me show you. So one of the chips is this Neotech NT1721 battery protection IC for two cell lithium ion battery. And here is a, a typical application circuit. And the next page shows a pinout and uh, this table um, of several versions. We have this version AB and they are slightly different uh, 
in uh, voltage uh, over charge over discharge thresholds and such and the second chip is these two uh, MOSFETs uh, which are external uh, to this uh, battery protection IC I didn't find the exact data sheet for NT8822 this is I believe a replacement from diodes incorporated and it is DMG8822 and this chip has a hole in it so it must be dead I took a couple of close-up pictures with my webcam and I will include them without the sound right after Some time later, have a look at this. I ordered a couple of these DMG8822 chips from DigiKey, 54 cents a piece. So let's try to fix our battery. So here is our board and a couple of replacement chips. And we are going to use this hot air station to remove the damaged chip. Let's go. This thing is absolutely tiny. Okay, let's go. I set my temperature to 300 degrees C. Let's see. There you go. Look at this, I managed to burn the bench a little bit. And now let's use this flux and this wick to remove the excess solder. Using a little helping hand here to keep the board in place because it's tiny. And even this thing is not heavy enough. But I think I managed to remove excess solder. Okay, I think it's clean enough for the new chip. So now I need to place this new chip and solder it. I'm going to hold it with the tweezers and apply tiniest amount of solder on just one pin for now. Alright, I think I soldered one pin. And now I think I need to turn this thing around and solder another pin on the other side. Alright, let's do it on the other side. Okay, I think I soldered one pin on this side as well. Now I need to carefully finish the soldering. I'll do this off camera. It's not very convenient uh, to try to show everything and carefully solder such a tiny chip. So I'll be back. I think I've done a pretty good job. Now I want to check the result for shorts using these sharp probes. All right, it passed my visual inspection and continuity test. No shorts found. So let's put it back in place and test. 
So I put the board back in place and measured the output voltage and there was nothing. So I was afraid that something is wrong and then it occurred to me that perhaps I need to initialize that chip or something. So um, I applied charging using this uh, lab supply. Uh, so I set the voltage to 8.4 volts, which is the target uh, charging voltage, and uh, limited the current to 100 milliamps applied to the battery. It took uh, some charge, it started taking the charge, so um, I disconnected it, and uh, now it shows 8 volts on the output, no problem at all. And let's test it with the electronic load. Okay, I connected the battery to the electronic load. So let's give it some load. Let's say 20 milliamps. Uh, let's enable it. Uh, no problem at all. It's taking it. Let's increase that to... 100 milliamps, no problem at all. So, looks like a success to me. Let's disable it for now. So, what I would like to do next is to do the complete discharge test and measure the capacity. So, uh, let's have a look at the data sheet which I found. For this battery. So here is the data sheet with all specs. Uh, the model is RLI 9600, 600 milliamp hours, uh, which is the typical capacity. Nominal capacity is 550 milliamp hours. The H's were missing here, just a mistake. Then some other specs like nominal voltage 7.4, charge voltage 8.4, uh, final discharge voltage, uh, the minimum voltage allowed 5.5 and the battery management should take care of that. Uh, and uh, let's see, here they start describing the performance. Uh, checking procedures and in particular uh, discharge, charge cycle and uh, some details about charging. So um, to measure discharge capacity they propose within one hour after full charge discharge until final discharge voltage which was 5.5 at 0.2 C. And this refers to the capacity. C is uh, capacity. That's the terminology uh, uh, with batteries. So this means 0 0.2 of 550 nominal capacity uh, in milliamps. So this means 110 milliamps. Uh, at that current we should discharge it to 5.5 and uh, we should measure more than 300 minutes. Uh, and charging uh, must be done to 8.4 volts at half C which is 225 milliamps and uh, uh, when it reaches 8.4 volts then it should go to constant voltage mode and current will keep dropping and the charging should be stopped when time or current satisfy specified condition and I don't see they specify this condition anywhere but usually that means until the current drops to let's say a few milliamps or something or some timeout. So let's try uh, charging it uh, completely and then do the discharge capacity test. I used a couple of drops of hot glue to keep the case in place. So let's move back to our precision lab power supply. 
let's connect the battery all right so charging lithium-ion batteries is really easy first we set um, our target voltage which is uh, eight point four then we set our current limit which in our case is half C which is 225 milliamps so point two two five and then we enable the output so now the current is limited to our target um, charging current and it's in constant current mode now uh, when it reaches our target voltage 8.4 then the current will keep dropping from that point on and the end of charge is when current drops to let's say a few milliamps or something like that sometimes a timeout is used so well, let's see what happens Alright, the current dropped below 10 milliamps and it's going down very very slowly So I believe our battery is fully charged at this point We are ready for the discharge test to measure capacity So let's set our point to C discharge current which is 110 millivolts uh, let's set the minimum voltage to 5.5 all right I'm starting the data capture on my computer and let's go Here is how it looks after about 10 minutes, still going fine. The hope is it will last more than 300 minutes according to the specs. And I have shown this piece of software before, I'm not going to repeat here. I'll put links below, check them out. So here is the result of our experiment. It didn't last 300 minutes, but almost. It lasted 280 minutes, which uh, is uh, 4.667 hours. And multiply that by 110 milliamps, uh, it gives us 513 milliamp hours, which is 93% of that rated uh, 550 milliamp hours nominal capacity. Not bad at all, considering that I have no idea how old this thing is and how it was used. So here we are. It looks a bit ugly, but it's fully operational. Thanks for watching. Bye.